Mary Ushers in the Age of the Eucharist by Bob and Penny Lord. There have been so many signs in these last years of the role Our Lady is playing in bringing us into the third millennium and preparing the way for the second coming of Christ. Many indicators have come from mystics and visionaries of yesterday and today. We have been pointed to them by people like His Holiness Pope John Paul II, Mother Angelica, and Father Gobi, just to mention a few. One of the most powerful mystics to share about the end times has been given to us by our Pope John Paul II. He has always had a devotion to Our Lady, and through that devotion was introduced to the great mystic and Marian saint of the 18th century, St. Louis Marie de Montfort. Our Pope constantly makes mention of true devotion to Mary and total consecration to Mary. These are both from St. Louis Marie de Montfort. The popularity of this saint has become very strong in recent years, but in addition, it's led us to read the predictions of St. Louis Marie de Montfort, which come from his mystical experiences. In true devotion to Mary, He had this to say about the role of the Holy Spirit through Our Lady in these last days. The salvation of the world began through Mary, and through her it must be accomplished. Mary scarcely appeared in the first coming of Jesus Christ, so that men, as yet insufficiently instructed and enlightened concerning the person of her Son, might not wander from the truth by becoming too strongly attached to her. But in the second coming of Jesus Christ, Mary must be known and openly revealed by the Holy Spirit so that Jesus may be known, loved, and served through her. God wished to reveal Mary his masterpiece and make her more known in these latter times. Since she is the dawn which precedes and discloses the Son of Justice, Jesus Christ, she must be known and acknowledged so that Jesus may be known and acknowledged. Since she is the sure means, the direct and immaculate way to Jesus and the perfect guide to him, it is through her that souls who are to shine forth in sanctity must find him. He who finds Mary finds life, that is, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Together with the Holy Spirit, Mary produced the greatest thing that ever was or ever will be, a God-man. She will consequently produce the marvels which will be seen in the latter times. The formation and the education of the great saints who will come at the end of the world are reserved for her. Mary has authority over the angels and the blessed in heaven. As a reward for her great humility, God gave her the power and the mission of assigning to saints the thrones made vacant by the apostate angels who fell away through pride. What Lucifer lost by pride, Mary won by humility. What Eve ruined and lost by disobedience, Mary saved by obedience. By obeying the serpent, Eve ruined her children as well as herself and delivered them up to him. Mary, by her perfect fidelity to God, saved her children with herself and consecrated them to his divine majesty. Towards the end of the world... Almighty God and His Holy Mother are to raise up saints who will surpass in holiness most other saints as much as the cedars of Lebanon tower above little shrubs. These great souls filled with grace and seal will be chosen to oppose the enemies of God who are raging on all sides. They will be exceptionally devoted to the Blessed Virgin, illumined by her light, strengthened by her spirit, supported by her arms, shelter under her protection. They will fight with one hand and build with the other. With one hand they will give battle, overthrowing and crushing heretics and their heresies, schismatics and their schisms, idolaters and their idolatries, sinners and their wickedness. With the other hand they will build the temple of the true Solomon and the mystical city of God, namely the Blessed Virgin. They will be like thunderclouds flying through the air at the slightest breath of the Holy Spirit, attached to nothing, surprised at nothing, 
They will shower down the rain of God's word and of eternal life. They will thunder against sin. They will storm against the world. They will strike down the devil and his followers, and for life and for death, they will pierce through and through with a two-edged sword of God's word, all those against whom they are sent by Almighty God. They will be true apostles of the latter times to whom the Lord of hosts will give eloquence and strength to work wonders and carry off glorious spoils from his enemies. They will sleep without gold or silver, and more important still, without concern in the midst of other priests, ecclesiastics, and clerics. Yet they will have the silver wings of the dove enabling them to go wherever the Holy Spirit calls them, filled as they are with the resolve to seek the glory of God and the salvation of souls. Wherever they preach, they will leave behind them nothing but the gold of love, which is the fulfillment of the whole law. They will have the two-edged sword of the word of God in their mouths and the blood-stained standard of the cross on their shoulders. They will carry the crucifix in their right hand and the rosary in their left, and the holy names of Jesus and Mary on their heart. We are all familiar with St. John Bosco's dream of May 30, 1862, in which he was given the privilege to see the salvation of the Church through the age of the Eucharist, being brought to us by Mother Mary. St. John Bosco saw a large ship with the Pope at the helm. We want to share with you this vision, which comes from his dreams, visions, and prophecies of Don Bosco, published by Don Bosco Publications. Suddenly, the Pope falls, seriously wounded. He is instantly helped up, but struck a second time, dies. A shout of victory rises from the enemy, and wild rejoicing sweeps their ships. In the midst of this endless sea, two solid columns, a short distance apart, soar high into the sky. On the one side, a statue of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin, stands high above the sea. At her feet is a large inscription which reads Auxilium Christianorum, Help of Christians. On the other side, and much higher, is a giant host at the base reading Salus Credentium, Salvation of Believers. The two columns stand tall and strong, warding off the trashing or raging winds. St. John Bosco describes smaller ships surrounding the large ship and the columns. Many of them attack the flagship, while others defend it. No sooner is the Pope killed than he is replaced by another Pope. The battle continues. Cannonballs shoot gaping holes into the hull of the ship, but a great wind blows and seals up the holes. The new Pope tries to steer his ship between the two columns, but is having an extremely difficult time of it because of the constant pummeling by the furious hurricane. Finally, he succeeds in bringing his ship between the columns. He ties it up at each column. The wind cries out a black curling shriek heard round the world and dies. The enemy ships scatter in great fear, their battle lost, while the defending ships sing out praises to our Lord Jesus as they too tie up at the post. A peaceful calm blankets the sea. We have always believed that there was a hidden meaning to this powerful vision, in addition to that which we had always understood. But it wasn't until we heard Father Gobi and Mother Angelica live in November that the pieces began to come together. We have always known that this vision of St. John Bosco was meant as much or more for our time than for the late 19th century, although there was a great need for strength in our church to protect us from the anti-clericalism which was rampant in that time. But we know that there is no coincidence in the actions of our Lord Jesus or Our Lady. When we wrote our book, The Many Faces of Mary, A Love Story, we opened the introduction with this story on the vision of Don Bosco. At that time, we stated, We chose to open this book with the vision or dream of St. John Bosco because we believe there is a strong connection between that dream and the work the Lord has commanded us to do. There was then, and is now, 
a great battle being waged between the powers of good and evil for control of the world and the destruction of two of the strongest powers we have in the church today, the Eucharist and our Mother Mary. But we did not yet understand how the meaning, as portrayed by the vision, is preparing us for the age of the Eucharist. Looking at the vision, we see that it is the larger of the two posts, the strength of our church, the Eucharist. Then we go to the smaller but very strong post, Our Lady. In Don Bosco's time, he venerated her at his oratory in Turin, as well as in all his books and speeches as Our Lady, Help of Christians. He credited Our Lady, Help of Christians, for all good things that happened in his lifetime. In this vision, Our Lady is looking intently and lovingly at the Eucharist. She gathers strength from our Lord Jesus in the Eucharist, and our Pope gathers strength from the Eucharist through Mother Mary. There is an electricity, a powerful current between the three. This is why we always refer to this vision when we share about church. To us, they represent the body of Christ, the mother of Christ, through the vicar of Christ. This vision has become so popular that it is being promoted by every Marian group in the United States. They are even making t-shirts showing the vision of Don Bosco. We are not sure they fully understand the significance of the vision of Don Bosco. We have also believed that what was called the ushering of the age of the Holy Spirit in the late 60s with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the Catholic Church was actually preceding the age of the Eucharist, which is being brought on strongly by Our Lady in our time, these last days of the 20th century, and will become an all-out explosion of grace in the next century. Taking all that into consideration and looking once more with scrutiny at the vision of Don Bosco, we believe that this is truly a prediction of Our Lady bringing us into the age of the Eucharist. It also affirms the role His Holiness will play in stressing the importance of the Eucharist first and devotion to Our Lady next, as those two great strengths which will protect our Church and put it on firm footing in the days to come. It also clearly puts Him at the head in leadership, the descendant of Peter, rallying His troops around the two great pillars. Add to the predictions of St. Louis Marie de Montfort, about the role of the saints in the final days. Almighty God and His Holy Mother are to raise up saints who will surpass in holiness most other saints as much as the cedars of Lebanon tower above little shrubs. You and I are called to be one of those saints. Are you ready for the battle? Will you use the shield of the Eucharist under the banner of Mary? Is that why we were born? Please load our free Bob and Penny Lord app. Here is how to download our free Bob and Penny Lord app. Simply, with your iPhone or Android device, go to the App Store, search for Bob and Penny Lord app, and download it. It's that simple. Here's what you can do with our free Bob and Penny Lord app. Number one, the, there's a link to our marketplaces, our websites, uh our uh, blog, and this podcast. The second link is to our Bob and Penny Lord TV channel, where you can access all of our videos as seen on EWTN, plus a whole lot more. Thank you very much.